Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, ToolsInTime.com. Welcome. Sorry I don't have a proper introduction for this video. However, I got a 98 Volkswagen TDI that came into the shop. The owner stated that when he would turn the turn signal on and apply the brake, the turn signal would go out and the brake lights wouldn't work properly as well. Let me demonstrate this so you guys can get a better picture. I right, turn the turn signal on. I right, step on the brake. Let off. Try the other side. Let off the brake. I right, step on the brake. Okay, that's good. Okay, here we are inside the vehicle. If I take and turn the left turn signal on, and I step on the brake, as you can see, the turn signal goes out. If I let off the brake, it goes back on. The same thing with the right. On the brake. Off the brake. Also, if I turn the four ways on, I step on the brake, you can see they die out as well. Okay, so here we are back at the garage. Let me show you, still doing it. left turn signal. As soon as I step on the brake, as you can see it goes out. I let off the brake. It goes back on. Same thing with the right. And then four ways. Let's see what we got. Check back here first. Make sure we don't have any obvious things going on. Okay, first I'm going to start by doing what they call a wiggle test. I'm going to create the problem and then I'm going to start wiggling the harness just to see if something obvious is bad, like background or something. I just got a bar here I'm going to use to apply the brake. Okay, I got the brake on. As you can see, my turn signal lights are on. That's not making much sense at all. So. Yeah, let's just, uh, I just lower down the covers. Let's see if anything I do back here. Yeah. Ah, see that? We might be on to something, guys. And that's why you gotta be careful when you do this stuff. Sometimes you can move something, it'll fix the problem, and you can't recreate it. Like right now, I can't get it to recreate, but I see something here that's pretty obvious. Let me bring you in here and show you. I don't know how good you guys can see it. But when I came in here and I started moving wires around start moving this harness if you took a look right there this brown wire it's actually rubbed through it was stuck on this bottom black one with a green tracer and you can see it's gotten really hot we take it on plug it you can see it's got the plug all melted inside we're going to have to repair that. Let's see where that brown wire goes. Ah, see that? It's a common ground. I actually see some corrosion down there too. I don't know if you guys got a better view from there.
And if you can see that the wires actually rubbed through. It was stuck. It was turned and there's a little chafing on the other black with green wire. It's hard to see it there. I don't know if you can see it, but uh they were actually melted together like that. Actually just like that. They were folded over pretty tight. You can see over time they just rubbed through. When I open this up. When you look inside you can, you can see that the heat has uh did a number to that terminal. I don't have anything like that, but instead of going and buy this whole piece, it's just a nice, easy, convenient thing to be able to take those wires off and unplug this and put new bulbs in it like that. You can see it's gotten pretty hot. But these these uh these strips are so heavy, I know they're not damaged. I'm thinking about just pulling that strip back, turning a single wire to it, and then running it out through the plug and repairing the ground that way instead of replacing everything and putting a ton of money in it. Let's bring it over to the workbench and see what we could do. When I first seen the symptoms, and he explained it to me. One of my first guesses was a bad ground because we were getting feedback because all the voltage wasn't going to ground and if you if you look on this this ground shares it's a common ground for both of these bulbs I'm going to take these right out of the socket for now so when we, uh, when we put our brake on or our turn signal the voltage was going through the filament and it was looking for a path to ground but it wasn't finding it and it was just it was floating through the other floating through the circuit looking for a way to ground so grounds can be very tricky to find but a lot of times you can find a problem to be a bad ground just in, like in this case so what I'm going to do with this instead of going out and trying, I know this is probably a dealer item Unless I go to a salvage yard and pay whatever they want for it if I can find it. But uh, instead of wasting all that time and everything, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it and it'll be a permanent fix. I'm just going to disconnect, uh, I'm just going to pull this terminal out and run a whole new ground down to the body. But this is simple enough to unhook. You don't have to always unplug it. And I'll just have to make the, the owner aware of... Uh, of what I did to do the repair, but it will be a permanent repair when I'm done with it. So let me show you how I'm going to go about it. As you can see, it's all melted through this back side, so everything's covered with plastic. I'm just going to take and bend that out. And you can see that thing's got hot. Instead of having that terminal pointing down inside and hooking on to the, this is the male. The plug has the female side, so it would usually just slide up over top of this. However, we'll be doing away with the, the female portion and just the wire on this that will go out through the plug where the female used to be. And uh, we'll run it right down the ground with its own new ground wire so it can be disconnected later on. I'm going to do away with this because you can see there's a lot of arcing going on. So I'm just going to trim this back. Okay, since this is regular steel, I can't solder to it, so you can see I trimmed it back to where I have good stuff left. But I came up with a better idea. I was going to take a, another female plug and plug onto there. But I figured that would just end up coming loose, so I'm going to trim this back even further. We're not even going to use that piece anymore. I'll just bend that down out of the way. What I'm going to do instead is if you follow that back, that ground is actually this whole metal surrounding housing. 
that this all shares a common ground. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill through the plastic right where that hole is, now through the other side, and I'm going to use an eyelet and use a small nut and bolt. But I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to count on the crimp connection because I want to show you guys how to do this stuff right. So what I'm going to need is my crimping tools. Let me grab a set. So, take and crimp it. Okay. In addition to crimping it, I'm going to also solder it. That way I know I have a good connection. Slap a little flux on there. Flowing there like butter. Okay. As you can see, it's going to flash to a nice dull finish. And that's a real nice solder joint. I got a, a, another short video on how to solder if you want to check that out. But that's a nice, that's a nice joint. Okay, now we have that made up. Let's proceed on the doing this piece up. After closer inspection I realized that hole is too close to this plug in the back. So I'm going to take and drill a new one. I think my best spot would be like right in between the two. Right around there. Let's drill a new hole. See, that's perfect. Now it'll be the new location for the ground. Okay. Got my little nut and bolt. The nice thing about this little nut is that it's a lock nut, so I don't have to worry about it coming loose. If it wasn't a lock nut, I would just take and pinch it a little bit since it's so thin and make it a a top lock nut, but this one has the nylon insert, so we'll be good. And as you can see, it fits fits nicely, and it'll be lowered in that tab, so I know we have plenty of clearance. Okay, this will be our new ground wire. I'm gonna simply install that there. Hope you guys can see this alright. I know it might be in your way a little bit. I'm gonna have to hold that with needle nose. Which is a tight fit. And we'll take and tighten her down. Okay. Whew. She ain't going nowhere. Like, oh man, that thing's good. Good as new. Okay. I'm going to take this on. Push it down where the old one used to come out. Like so. 
And that's going to be our new ground wire on the inside. And that's going to be better than new. And as you can see, it comes through this side, like so. Then I'll take you inside the car and show you what I'll do the rest of the way. This is the old ground wire. It's burnt. And you see there ain't much left to it. It's all brittle and falling apart. I'm just going to take and cut that. Pull that through. Here's the new one. Take this end and run it through, just like so. Take the plug. And then we'll, uh, we'll just plug it in like so. And as you can see, it's all back to normal with the new uh, ground wire. Let me get the light bulbs. Single filament. Okay, put that light bulb back in. Put that bulb back in. Okay, we're just all the assembly. Like so. Put this other plug in. Okay, now let's proceed on uh, running the new ground. I don't know how good you can see that because of the light. But this is that ground wire that we just cut off. Goes right down to that junction. I'm going to take and remove this all together. Okay. I'm kind of just doing this repair as I go, but if I would have would have planned sooner, I could have made this up on a bench. However, I could do it here just as easy. We got another eyelet. Crimp that. And that would be fine. That's a good crimp. However, I like to solder everything. Set it on like so. Just let it run in. Like so. That's a good solder connection. That'll be good as new. I just simply take and install the new ground wire. Okay, get nice and tight. That'll be our new ground. All right, let's try it. Step on the brake. Okay, turn the key on and try your turn signals. Okay, step on the brake. Okay, do the right. Step on the brake. Okay, we got it. Just one of them things, you could chase, sometimes you could chase them problems for hours and not find them. That's why I usually like starting with a little wiggle test, I call it. Well, a lot of people call it. It's an actual test. It's called a wiggle test. On my old Snap-on scanner for the OBD-1, it actually has a function where you put it on wiggle test when you're trying to find intermittent problems. And that's pretty much what you do. You put it on the test and you start wiggling stuff and it, it does a recording as you're doing that. And it'll, if something goes haywire while you're wiggling it, it'll, it'll show up. But anyhow, that's how I found the background doing a wiggle test. I don't know how else to say it, but thanks for watching. Like always, feel free to come visit me at toolsoftime.com. Got a helpful forum. And subscribe. See you next time, guys. Have a good one. Stay tuned.